Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your Exponent Rules Review. We're going to go over all of the rules that we've learned thus far. The first thing we're going to do is add and subtract monomials. That's where we combine like terms. So when I combine like terms, the first thing I need to do is identify all the terms that are alike. So let's look at this first term here, 3x squared y. And then the, the term that's alike with this term is negative 5x squared y. So I like to say the sign in front goes with the term. So this is a negative 5x squared y. And then I'm going to combine those using our integer rules. Negative 5 and positive 3 makes negative 2. Then last name stays the same. That's that x squared y. Okay, so your variables and exponents stay the same when you're combining like terms. All you do is just combine the coefficients and then the variables and exponents stay the same. So now let's look at this 2xy and negative 4xy. Those are like terms, which means I can combine them. That xy is alike with this xy. They're like terms, I can combine them. Positive 2 and negative 4 makes negative 2. Then last name stays the same. So now let's go over to multiplying monomials. So when we were adding and subtracting monomials, you would see a plus sign or a minus sign in between every term. When we're multiplying, we don't see that. We might see a term butted up next to a parentheses right here. We also, sometimes you might see a little dot right there. You really don't see that in upper level math, but you might see it in algebra one sometimes. So what can you do when you're multiplying? You use your product rule. What does your product rule say to do? Add your exponents. So if I have this first one right here, 3x squared times negative 5xy to the fifth, the first thing I do is I recognize, okay, I'm multiplying here. I'm going to use the product rule. I need to multiply my numbers first. Numbers, then variables. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Now I can apply my product rule to my variables and their exponents. So I look at each variable at a time. x squared times x, if I don't have an exponent there, what can I put there? A one, and then I add. Two plus one is three, so that becomes x to the power of three. And then don't forget that y to the fifth. A lot of students, because I'm not multiplying it times another y, they just leave it off. Don't do that, it doesn't go away, it stays. So now let's look at the next one. I've got three terms that I'm multiplying together. I know that because I don't have any plus or minus signs in between them, so I'm not adding and subtracting, I'm multiplying. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply all of my numbers. Negative two times negative 15 times three. What is that? It's 90. Now let's look at each variable at a time and we're gonna use our product rule. A to the power of three, I don't have any A's in my middle term, and then A. A to the power of three times A is A to the fourth, now let's look at our b's. b squared times b is b cubed. So now let's go over to our power rule where we raise a power to another power. So what you'll notice in this one is that you have parentheses around a term and then you have an exponent right outside the parentheses. So that's a key characteristic for this um, type of rule that we're gonna be using. So x squared all raised to the power of five what do I do? I apply my power rule. I multiply my exponents. That becomes x to the power of 10. And now let's look at the next one. We've kind of got a lot going on. We've actually got this term right here with an exponent right outside of the parentheses, this term right here with an exponent right outside of the parentheses, and then what would I be doing with those two terms? When they're butted up right next to each other, we're multiplying. So we need to, using our um, order of operations, which I'm just going to write down here, PEMDAS, we need to simplify our exponents first. So negative 2 raised to the power of 2 is what? 4. Then x to the power of 3 raised to the power of 2, I multiply my exponents, I get x to the power of 6 times, now let's do the next one, 3 to the power of 2 is 9. And then if I don't have an exponent there, I can put a one, x to the power of one times two, which is two. So you have to be careful with this power rule because a lot of students want to multiply their exponents, but then that's also what they'll do with their big numbers. They'll do negative two times two, 
negative four, or they'll do three times two and they'll get six, and that's not what you do, okay? You need to raise those numbers to that power, then apply your power rule to the exponents. So now since we're multiplying, we're gonna use our product rule. The first thing I do is multiply my numbers. Four times nine is what? 36. Then I can apply my product rule, which we just went over, to these variables and their exponents. So times x to the power of eight. Good. So now let's go over to dividing monomials. When we divide, we're gonna use our quotient rule, right? Quotient is the answer to a, a division problem. So we call it our quotient rule. When you're dividing monomials, what can you do with your exponents? You subtract them. So again, what you do with your numbers is what you've always done with your numbers. This applies to your variables and their exponents or anything with the same base that's raised to a power. So the first thing in this first example, I'm gonna look at four over negative eight. I'm gonna look at these numbers first. Four over negative eight. Well, if I simplify that, what do I get? Negative one half. And then now I can look at my variables one at a time with my exponents. If I don't have an exponent there, what could I put there? A one, because it's assumed to have an exponent of one if there is nothing there. So then x to the power of seven minus one is what? Six. Y to the power of 15 minus 11 is what? Four. So again, what you don't wanna do is write these variables in the denominator, okay? You can write your fraction like this and you can put these variables kind of like in the middle like that, or you could do it like this. Negative x to the power of six times y to the fourth over two. You can do that, but you can't put the variables in the denominator, okay? You can put them like in the middle where your fraction's kind of like this in front, or you can put the variables in the numerator. Don't put them in your denominator, it's not the same. Okay, in the next one, we've kind of got a little bit going on. We've got the power rule, and I noticed that because I have an exponent right outside my parentheses. So, and then I have a division problem. So referring back to my order of operations, PEMDAS, I know I need to simplify the exponents before I divide. So let's do this. Negative x squared raised to the power of four. What is that? Positive x to the power of eight over three x cubed y squared, because I don't do anything down here. But now when looking at this, I notice I have some the same variable on top and on bottom. So obviously I need to simplify that somehow. So right here, I can apply my quotient rule right there. Eight minus three, what is that? That's five. So this becomes x to the power of five over three y squared. All right, moving on. Now let's go to negative exponents. That's the last thing we did, negative exponents. So when you have negative exponents, in order to make it, rewrite it where it's positive, you need to take the reciprocal, so flip it. So I like to write, you can always write anything as a fraction, you can put it over one. So when you take the reciprocal, you flip it, so that a to the power of m, it goes in the denominator, and then you make it positive, okay? So if I look at this first example, x to the power of negative three, how would I rewrite that using only positive exponents? It's one over x to the power of three. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, so my order of operations tells me I need to simplify what's inside the parentheses first. So there's a couple of ways I can go about this, but I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna simplify what's inside the parentheses first. So the first thing I see is four over eight. I need to simplify four over eight. How can I do that? That's one half. And then I have x to the power of negative five over x to the power of seven. So if I use my quotient rule, that would be negative five minus seven, which is negative 12. So that's gonna be times x to the power of negative 12. And then all of this is raised to the power of negative two. So now, I can apply my power rule to this simplified um, term on the inside. 
So one half raised to the power of negative two. Well, one half raised to the power of two is one fourth. So one half raised to the power of negative two is flip it and you get four times x to the power of negative 12 times negative 2 is positive 24 and that's your answer so now let's go to our last example this is our multi-step example so we have to remember all of our rules together and we also have to apply our order of operations here so the first thing i notice is I've got a lot of exponents right outside the parentheses. I'm gonna simplify all of those first by applying my power rule. Okay, so in our numerator up here, if I raise four to the power of two, what do I get? I get 16. Then I can apply my power rule times x to the power of what? Five times two, which is 10, times y to the power of seven times two, which is 14 over okay so now here we have negative 2 times x to the fourth raised to the power of 3 in our denominator so off to the side i'm just going to write this down negative 2 to the power of 3 what is that negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 that's negative 8 so negative 8 times x to the power of 12. and then what do you notice about the next term times anything raised to the power of zero is what it's one so this is like saying this term right here times one so i'm not even going to write times one down because i know it's just going to be the same negative eight times x to the twelfth times one is just negative eight times x to the twelfth times and then over here i'm going to apply my power rule again so x to the power of negative two times negative 2 is x to the power of 4 times y to the power of negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. so then right now i've got this fraction times this monomial right here so using my order of operations I'm, i multiply and divide from left to right whichever comes first so let's simplify this fraction numbers then variables 16 over negative 8 what is that it's negative 2. Then I've got x to the power of 10 over x to the power of 12. If I apply my quotient rule, I get x to the power of negative 2. And then I don't have any y's on bottom, so I'm just going to rewrite y to the power of 14. And now I'm multiplying. What do I do when I'm multiplying? I apply my product rule. So again, just like if you don't have an exponent, you can put a one there. If you don't have a coefficient, you can also put a one there. A lot of students like to do that because they want to multiply something. Negative two times one is negative two. That's perfectly fine. So now let's look at each variable at a time. So my product rule tells me I add my exponents. So let's look at x to the power of negative two and x to the power of four. If I combine those exponents, I get positive two. So that's x to the power of positive 2 then times y to the power of 14 plus 8 is 22 and that's your exponent rules review i hope it was helpful